Live from the Carl Chevrolet Studios in West Des Moines, this is Iowa Live. Welcome back to the program, everybody. It is time to check in with Professor Jeff Stein once again and see how things are doing. Hello, Mr. Stein. How are you? I am well, Lou. How is Thursday treating you so far? Uh, so far, so good. And, uh, you know, when we got up like uh, many other people and start driving around, uh, it was fairly easy to get to where we were going. Now, on today's edition of the Iowa Almanac, if you uh, live in central Iowa and you have traveled north and south for any distance, you're going to be informed as to why you're able to do that with such ease. Man, you have some fellow Iowans to thank for the efforts for the whole idea, Lou. Well, let's go back to March of 1911, first of all. There was a group called the Des Moines, Kansas City, St. Joseph Interstate Trail Association. That's quite a handle. Well, they were organized in Lamoni, and the idea was to create a route between those cities. And they marked it out from St. Joe to Kansas City to Des Moines. Now, officially, that highway, prior to that point, was a direct route between Fort Des Moines and Fort Leavenworth. Oh. That's how they figured out Des Moines through Kansas City to St. Joseph, because it would connect you from Fort Des Moines to Fort Leavenworth. So it became a quite practical road for transporting troops as well as a way for everyone to improve business. Well, on this date, January 5th of 1915, a few years later, a meeting of that same association was held at Mason City, and the idea was to extend that original trail I talked about 271 miles north from Des Moines. They went through Nevada, Iowa Falls, Mason City, and Northwood here in Iowa, and Albert Lee, Owatonna, Faribault, and Northfield on their way to St. Paul, Minnesota. All right, now, now that route you know, sounds somewhat familiar. Uh, explain uh, how that route developed into something that everybody is familiar with. And this is what's interesting. They marked this out 108 years ago. Yeah. But that's the path that Interstate 35 still takes today, roughly through that area. <laughs> so before we were using cars to the degree, certainly that we do now, et cetera, they had already mapped it out, and we have not improved upon it since. Now, so that took us from Missouri through Iowa to Minnesota, but they weren't done. It was a pretty good idea. So later that same year of 1915, Edwin Meredith, as in Successful Farming Magazine there oh, in Des Moines. Yeah, right. Okay, so he thought, well, we need to do more. So he organized a meeting, Lou, all the way down in New Orleans. And the idea was to create a great north-south highway named for the president who was responsible for the Louisiana Purchase. So they formed something called the Jefferson Highway Association. They extended this road to the south, and that completed a north-south run across the United States. But all of this was made possible because of the success of those original trails that connected Iowa to our neighbors north and south. And that connection that completed the run through Iowa was organized at a meeting held on this date in 1915. So what we know now is, is I as I-35 that goes north and south in the, in the central uh, United States. Is that really, they call it the Jefferson Highway in some areas then, or is that something different? Well, the original Jefferson Highway, it's much like you see the Lincoln Highway in Iowa goes right. along much of Highway 30. Okay. They established the Jefferson Highway. It still mirrors in some spots I-35, but of course the interstate has moved just like Highway 30 has moved east-west. But you'll still occasionally see a Lincoln Highway marker, and they look very much like the Jefferson Highway marker, because that's how we marked roads before we had numbers. Uh, that is awesome. That is great information. We learn something yeah. new every day, courtesy of the Iowa Almanac. If people want to find out everything that we talked about today and learn about all the other days of the year, where can they go? Go to iowaalmanac.com, Twitter and Instagram, too, at Iowa Almanac. Now, you're going to be back with us uh, once again tomorrow, and we're going to find out about a slogan, Iowa, a place to grow, and how it came to be. We are looking forward to that, Professor Stein. I will be here. Have a great day. All right. You have yourself a great day as well.